Okay, so the first thing we're going to model is this kind of main piece here, the main body. Um, so it's important to make sure we've got our kind of viewport set up properly so we can do that. So um, if you just hit Z on your keyboard, then that will center everything into the viewport there. This makes it a nice kind of easy way to start. So the first shape we're going to need is a cylinder for kind of this area here. So if we just click on the cylinder primitive and then click and drag in the view. And just stretch it out like so. And then we'll go to rotate mode and just rotate that 90 degrees. If you're finding it's hard to rotate exactly 90, make sure you've got angle snap turned on up here. So it'll snap to 5 degrees. Um, another useful little shortcut, if you right click you can get to move, rotate and scale from here or you can use um, W, E and R which is kind of my preference. Ok so we'll just move this object to the back here we'll go to modify and we'll just increase the height to there um, and just so we can see our plan better, we're going to make this translucent in a much easier kind of way to work. So if you hold Alt and press X, then you can make the object translucent. And of course, F4 there toggles between um, wire and solid and solid mode. That's F4 for that. Okay, so the first one we can see is we've got kind of um, we need to mess with the topology of our model a little bit. Um, now one thing we want to make sure is that we we have a centre line running along the top and a centre line along the bottom. So we just need to increase our sides a little bit. The reason we do that is so that we can make it kind of symmetrical. Okay, so we'll just put those X there. You can see that's better. We should have either side and one at the top and the bottom. And we'll also just reduce our side segments down to zero. Okay, so if we then put an edit poly modifier onto this model, and make sure you've got this stupid kind of shortcut override turned off. Then what we're going to do is go to polygon mode and select the top of the, of the cylinder. We'll go to bevel here and we'll just move that on and then we'll use this slider to bring it down as well. Let's just turn on Alt X as well so you can see. We'll just hit the tick on there. Then we'll go to extrude. And we'll slide that one along to there. OK that one. And then bevel again and tweak these settings to kind of match this shape. OK, we'll come. But let's. Um, the shortcuts for all the front views, by the way, you can just use F for front, L for left, and T for top. So it's pretty much just kind of first letter. Um, you can also use V. If you press V, you can pull up a kind of list of views that you can use. Okay, so just come out of polygon mode for a second, and we'll just move this model onto here. And then on this view we'll hit F to go to front view. And then our perspective view we'll just rotate this round and go back to polygon mode and select this end poly. Then if you just use inset, so just turn on inset by hitting the button there and then click and drag. You can actually pull in and make a set of uh, points like so. And then go to extrude and click and drag in the view again pull it out, then inset again, click and drag down, extrude, drag 
drag out. And we're going to insert one more time. So, so it should end up with something like that. And if we just right click and go to hide unselected, then we can extrude this inwards as well to kind of make that kind of engine area. Okay, so we'll unhide all now that we've completed that bit. So we've seen like two different techniques we can use there. One is to actually turn on extrude mode and then just make a selection and click and drag. And the other is to actually use these settings to pull up this and be a far more kind of precise about it. <coughs> okay, so we have the start of the kind of main body. Now it's time to kind of go in and start adding a bit more detail. So the first thing we want to do is get in these um, little areas here that kind of stick out on the model. And to do that, what we're going to use is connect. So the way this works is we just make a selection of edges and then we can just um, cut a new set of edges directly through that. So let's just try that. The first thing I want you to do is just select one edge along here and if you hold shift and select the next edge along you'll see it selects kind of every edge along there. Now I want you to hit this connect settings button here and just make five sets of edges and just hit OK. And so you can now see we've got kind of new set of edges here. Okay, so the next thing I want you to do is just select like so because we're going we want to draw another line for each of these but we don't want to obviously we don't want to connect select these kind of vertical edges here again hit connect and this time we'll put it down to one and then you'll see we've actually got a slide option if you just slide that along to roughly where you feel okay put one onto 85 and just hit okay on that just alt text to Make it visible, and you can see we now have got a nice kind of set of cuts. What we want to do though is actually move these kind of into position based on the plan. So, if you stay in edge mode and just select, and then hold shift to select there, and then hold control to select that one, and then hold shift like so, or the other way to do it is just select. By holding control and left clicking on each edge, you can select each one and then just loop. That will get them. So I'll move the first lot into place, then holding Alt and holding left mouse button down, I can drag around and deselect on there. And then holding Alt and holding left mouse button down and dragging, I can deselect on there, move that along, again, same thing, and just until you've, whoops, and just undo with control Z if I make a mistake, and there we go. Okay, so now we've got those in place, we actually need to create some geometry that sticks out from there. To do that, go to polygon mode. Um, the shortcuts for each of these, by the way, each of your different elements, is just 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 on the keyboard. So if I just hit 1, you'll see that will go to vertex mode, 2 will go to edge mode, and 4 will go to polygon mode. And then what I want you to do is just do a left click and drag select on all those. And if you just hold Alt and then drag select each of the big kind of areas out, I often find in Max it's a lot easier to minus select then add on to a selection. So you'll see me do that quite a kind of lot in um, these modeling tutorials. Um, that is select a larger area than I want and then deselect the bits I don't want. Okay, so to make these areas stick out, we're just going to use extrude. So if we just hit extrude. Now you notice it'll probably do something like that, so it's just not quite working properly at the moment. And that's because there's different kind of 
ways of extruding and that's with this little drop down menu here so if we hit that you see we've got group normals local normals and polygon so first of all try polygon and then actually make this stick out rather than inwards and you'll see what we get each polygon extrudes individually try by local normals and that's the actual one we want so we'll just bring that down be a bit precise we'll do it by five centimeters and just say okay okay so we're starting to get kind of basic shape to our model now um, so the next thing we're going to look at doing is this indentation here um, of course we could use connect for this but I just want to show you another little tool if you come over to your graphite modeling tools here and go to edit you'll see you have swift loop we just select that you'll see you get this little kind of green preview wherever you roll your mouse now that's previewing what it's going to cut so if I just click there you see it's actually made a new cut for me in the model so again we'll go to polygon mode select and then deselect what we don't want and then extrude and obviously on this one we want to extrude inwards so we'll just extrude this in by say minus 5 ok and alt x to go back to visible mode and we're starting to get somewhere with this ok so the next thing I'm looking at is this kind of front area here and you'll see how it's curved and we don't have this curved so again we're going to use swift loop just to add in two loops and then we're going to curve this area off one thing I like using actually if you just hit this maximize viewport it can make it a little bit easier to work so we'll go to vertex mode so remember that's just one on your keyboard and then by selecting this front row we'll go to scale and make sure you select the inner triangle here to scale on we'll just kind of curve this off a little bit by selecting each row and there you go we have some kind of nice curvature to it now okay so the next thing we're going to do is you'll notice this is all um, kind of jagged edges at the moment and this area is quite smooth and that's because of smoothing groups so if we just go to polygon mode here and if you press control and A to select everything in your model in fact you can also use F2 if you want to just turn off that toggles between put it red and just have show edges in red if you scroll down in your polygon um, to your polygon smoothing group section here and just hit auto smooth you should see the model kind of smooth out now there's loads of stuff you can do with these smoothing groups um, like for instance let's say I wanted this this edge line in here to be visible well to do that I would select that area there turn off that smoothing group and say turn on one further away say six and you can see that is now defined so we'll be covering more about smoothing groups later like um, it's fine if you just want to use the um, auto smooth settings right so the next bit we're going to look at modeling is this kind of top engine bit here so we're going to do similar techniques so just start with a cylinder roughly kind of draw out where you want it stretch it out a little bit and then go to rotate mode and making sure you have angle snap turned on just turn it directly 90 degrees you can actually see down here um, the exact angle you're rotating as well as your little dialog up here so if you just watch that bit you'll see that that actually tells you so we'll go to modify and we'll just increase the height move 
move this to the back. Again, just increase the height. We'll just move it along to there. Remember to use Alt X on your keyboard to make it translucent and check the number of sides so that you have um, one a whole kind of cut going directly through the middle and across the side. Um, another little thing, if you want to change just the colour of your model, just the kind of base colour, you can use this little parameter there. So just any kind of colour. And obviously you can type the name in here. So let's call this um, ship main. And we'll call this ship engine. Okay, so we'll then apply an edit poly modifier. And remember to make sure that this is turned off. And then we'll go into polygon mode. And in fact, what we're going to do here, just makes it a bit easier for you. If you right click and go to unfreeze all, you can select these two, hide selection. And now you can work in this view with this one as your kind of reference. So I'll move this into its kind of rough position. Go to polygon mode and we'll select the end poly here. And remember we'll use inset first and then we'll use extrude like so. Inset again and then we'll extrude inwards this time. Remember to use Alt X to go transparent. We're just going to go into our big view here. And then we're going to do what we did before and add in these cuts. So this time we're going to use Swift Loop again. And we'll just click where we want the loops to add. Now obviously the advantage of this technique is it's faster. Um, one issue of it is we're not actually being kind of completely precise with this. I remember as we did before, do a big group select and then hold Alt and do a drag select on each of these just to minus off the selection. And then we'll go back to our big view and we'll just extrude that out. Remember if it's not working properly, just pick by polygon, that's not right. So local normals, and then we'll do it by say five again. Hit OK. And we have the start of it there. You can see we've got another kind of area here, so let's draw that in. Swift loop, click on both of those, come to polygon mode. And just to show you another quick way of selecting polygons, if you go to edge mode here, select one edge, hold shift to loop it, then if you hold control and then go to polygon mode, that will switch your whatever your selection is into polygons or polygons to edges or and it'll switch between all of them. Uh, just bear in mind that when you do it, um, you can only go through these, so you can't go through there for instance. <coughs> the actual shortcut will only work if you're going through these ones. Okay, so with those polygons selected, we'll hit extrude, and we'll just leave that at 5. Remember it's um, F4 to go to kind of smooth and wireframe mode. Oops. Okay, so the next bit we need to do is this bit here. So we'll select the polygon here and we'll just extrude that out to there because then we're then going to just do um, select this area and extrude out as we did before. 